Hola amigos, esto es Explorando con Cindy y hoy nos encontramos en la famosa represa de Hoover Dam, en el estado de Nevada. Acompáñanos en esta aventura. De camino a la represa Hoover desde Las Vegas, nos detuvimos en este mirador panorámico del lago Mead. El lago Mead es un reservorio en el cauce principal del río Colorado. La represa Hoover fue la que formó el lago Mead y se encuentra en el Black Canyon o en el Cañón Negro, aproximadamente a 48 kilómetros al este de Las Vegas, en el estado de Nevada, en el desierto de Mojave. Cuando está lleno, el lago Mead es el reservorio más grande de los Estados Unidos por volumen y es el segundo más grande en superficie. La represa Hoover es una represa de arco de gravedad en el Black Canyon o Cañón Negro del río Colorado y se encuentra entre los estados de Nevada y Arizona. Aquí nos encontramos llegando a la entrada de la represa Hoover. Llegamos temprano en la mañana del día lunes 13 de marzo del 2023 para evitar la multitud de gente pero aún así se encontraba lleno. Tomó algún tiempo llegar desde el punto de control de seguridad hasta el área principal del centro de visitantes de la represa Hoover. Pero una vez que llegamos a la represa, la vista era increíble. Realmente te recomiendo que visites la represa Hoover si estás en el estado de Nevada. Después de estacionar nuestro carro dentro de la primera estructura de estacionamiento en el lado izquierdo de la carretera, puedes caminar fácilmente hasta el centro de visitantes. Hay varios ascensores en la represa Hoover. Hay uno en la estructura de estacionamiento y a solo unos metros de arriba de las escaleras mecánicas del centro de visitantes encontrarás otro ascensor. La infraestructura de este estacionamiento es muy interesante. Estos son unos paneles interpretativos que hay alrededor de la represa Hoover. Antes de entrar al centro de visitantes, 
tendrás que pasar nuevamente por un control de seguridad, pero es muy rápido, fácil y es muy eficiente. Las armas de fuego, los drones y los cuchillos de cualquier tamaño están prohibidos en la represa y no se permiten alimentos ni bebidas en el edificio a excepción de botellas de agua. Puedes encontrar máquinas expendedoras de agua en el centro de visitantes y también tienen una botella de agua recargable por 5 dólares con la imagen de la represa Hoover que la puedes utilizar como un souvenir.
amid the country's economic uncertainty, the workers in this canyon gave new life to the nation's spirit as they gave new life to the desert southwest. This is an engineering victory of the first order, another great achievement of American resourcefulness, American skill, and American determination. And that is why I have the right once more to congratulate you who have built it and pulled it out. And on behalf of the nation, to say to you, well done. Franklin Delano Roosevelt dedicated Boulder Dam on September 30th, 1935. In 1947, Congress officially named it Hoover Dam. Some call it the most prodigious engineering construction feat since the Great Pyramids of Egypt. When a U.S. Senate committee endorsed construction of Hoover Dam in 1928, its report said, a mighty river, now a source of destruction, is to be curbed and put to work in the interests of society. And so it was. Hoover Dam brought the desert flood control, a reliable supply of water, electrical power, and more. Behind a 726-foot-tall concrete face lies Lake Mead. America's largest man-made lake. Born of the collected waters of the Colorado River, it could cover the entire state of Pennsylvania to the depth of one foot. But held behind Hoover Dam, it is a life-giving source for communities throughout the Southwest. On its way to meet downstream needs, thousands of gallons of water per second flow from Lake Mead through the dam's 17 giant turbines producing clean, non-polluting hydroelectric power. Hoover Dam produces almost four and a half billion kilowatt hours of electricity each year, enough to serve the needs of over one million people. The sale of this power has repaid the entire cost of constructing Hoover Dam and continues to fund the yearly operating and maintenance costs as well. Hoover Dam helped ensure a future for the communities that settled along the river and the low, flat valleys of Southern California and Southwest Arizona. In Las Vegas, Phoenix, Los Angeles, and other smaller cities, Colorado River water delivered from Lake Mead helps meet the needs of millions of people a year. Hoover Dam and other dams along the Colorado River contain the floodwaters spawned each spring by melting snows. And from their reservoirs flows an assured and reliable water supply for water users throughout the basin. Combined with the warm climate and rich soils of the lower Colorado River Basin, water from Lake Mead has created some of the most productive farmland in the country. Farms in Arizona, Southern California, and Mexico, irrigated by these controlled flows, produce over a billion dollars worth of vegetables and fruits throughout the year for dinner tables across the nation. The clear reservoirs and controlled river stretches resulting from construction of Hoover and other dams have created year-round recreational opportunities at the National Park Service's Lake Mead Recreation Area and other locations along the Colorado River. Hoover Dam first helped create, and now helped sustain, the high quality of life enjoyed by millions of people in the desert southwest. At Hoover Dam and its other projects throughout the west, the Bureau of Reclamation is focused on efficient, effective, environmentally sensitive water resources management to help ensure our limited water supplies can meet the needs of all who depend on them. Wherever the system delivers water, life flourishes. Herbert Hoover, engineer, humanitarian, politician, 
fishermen and conservationists, believed, as did many others, in a vision where man could affect nature for the good. With every touch of its coarse, concrete skin, and each sparkle that dances behind its crown, Ruler Dam reminds us of the need to dream noble purposes and the strength of the human spirit to achieve great aspirations. Los animales de servicio son bienvenidos y las sillas de ruedas están disponibles para alquilar en el estacionamiento por únicamente 5 dólares. Las áreas del centro de visitantes de la represa Hoover también tienen estacionamiento para vehículos RV o vehículos recreativos. También hay múltiples baños, fuentes bebederos y en la parte inferior de la estructura de estacionamiento puedes encontrar un restaurante y una heladería. Aquí estamos ingresando al centro de exhibiciones de la represa Hoover. Puedes pasar horas en la represa Hoover, así que planifica tu día con anticipación. El mejor horario para visitar esta represa es muy temprano en la mañana o en la tarde, alrededor de las 2 y 30 de la tarde. El horario de operación de la represa Hoover es de 9 de la mañana hasta las 5 de la tarde y está cerrado el Día de Acción de Gracias y Navidad. Disponen de tres tipos diferentes de entradas para tu visita. Puedes elegir el boleto del Centro de Visitantes de 10 dólares, que incluye la entrada a las exhibiciones del Centro de Visitantes y la plataforma de observación, y una presentación de mapa topográfico del edificio de exhibición original de la era de 1940. También puedes elegir el boleto de tour de la central eléctrica de 15 dólares que incluye todo lo que incluye en el boleto de 10 dólares más una película de 10 minutos sobre la historia de la represa Hoover y una visita guiada de 30 minutos a la plataforma de observación con vista a la planta eléctrica en el área subterránea de la represa en donde tomarás un elevador para llegar a ella. Y el último boleto es el tour de la represa Hoover, pero debes tener 8 años de edad o más y este tour no es accesible para discapacitados. En lugar del recorrido de 30 minutos en el tour anterior, este recorrido es de una hora, porque también se detiene en un túnel de inspección original dentro de la represa. La venta de estos boletos para los tours en línea se suspendió temporalmente en su página de internet, por lo que los boletos se obtienen dentro del centro de visitantes y son por orden de llegada. Nosotros optamos por comprar el boleto de 15 dólares por persona con el tour de 30 minutos a la planta eléctrica. La represa Hoover o el Hoover Dam es un testimonio de los miles de trabajadores que construyeron este proyecto en tiempos de adversidad, durante la época de la Gran Depresión en los Estados Unidos. Miles de hombres y sus familias llegaron a Black Canyon para trabajar en la represa Hoover. Esta represa sigue en pie como una estructura de renombre mundial. Esta represa también fue y es un hito histórico nacional y ha sido calificada por la sociedad estadounidense de ingenieros civiles como una de las siete maravillas de la ingeniería civil moderna en América. La represa Hoover fue construida entre los años de 1931 y 1936, durante la época de la Gran Depresión, y fue inaugurada el 30 de septiembre de 1935 por el presidente Franklin D. Roosevelt. La represa la nombraron Represa Hoover después de que el presidente Herbert Hoover aprobara un proyecto de la ley en el Congreso durante su construcción. La administración Roosevelt la nombró primero Represa Boulder y el Congreso restauró el nombre de Represa Hoover en 1947. El costo de construcción de la Represa Hoover fue de aproximadamente 49 millones de dólares en 1931. Esta es una represa de arco de gravedad y tiene 221 metros de altura y 379 metros de largo. El ancho de la base es de 201 metros y el volumen de concreto es de 2.6 millones de metros cúbicos. Esta represa tiene 17 unidades de generadoras comerciales en la planta de energía, como veremos algunas de ellas en el recorrido de la planta de energía. 
En la actualidad, la represa Hoover controla las inundaciones del río Colorado, riega más de un millón y medio de acres de tierra y proporciona agua a más de 16 millones de personas. La energía generada por la represa Hoover proporciona energía eléctrica a 1.3 millones de personas. Y los tres estados que reciben energía de esta represa son el estado de Nevada, el estado de Arizona y el estado de California. Entre 1939 y 1949, la central eléctrica del Hoover fue la instalación hidroeléctrica más grande del mundo y hoy sigue siendo una de las más grandes del país. The Colorado River begins its journey out of the Rocky Mountains. It flows miles all the way to Mexico. It flows through some of the driest regions of the country and often the hottest. The Colorado River is their life. For centuries, people have used its water for drinking, fishing, and watering their crops. The Colorado River has unpredictable periods of both flooding and drought. This made living near the water difficult and often dangerous for the people who depended on it. In 1902, the federal government created what became the Bureau of Reclamation. It would manage the water flow and help small family farms and Native American communities. Reclamation's largest project was a huge dam on the lower Colorado River. It would control flooding and bring reliable water and hydroelectric power into farms and growing cities. This would become Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam and its reservoir, Land Mead, are located southeast of Las Vegas, Nevada. The dam was designed in the late 1920s by Bureau of Reclamation Engineers. They selected the desolate site of Black Canyon between Arizona and Nevada on the lower Colorado River. In 1931, a group of major western contracting firms joined together for this major construction effort. They were known as Six Companies Incorporated, or the Big Six. Around 20,000 people flocked to the site seeking work during the Great Depression. Only about 5,000 workers were hired to build the dam, and Boulder City was built to house them. Six companies also constructed a highway, railroad, and power transmission lines. They built special machinery and a plant to produce the huge amounts of concrete needed for the job. Six companies had to make a dry place in the middle of the Colorado River for construction. Workers drilled and blasted four massive tunnels through the solid rock walls of Black Canyon and then forced the river to flow through them. Tonight of the day, a solid, stable rock, the soft river bottom was excavated. Ice gave way to the dangerous workers and moved the roof stock to the western walls. Hoover Dam is a concrete gravity arch dam. The arch transfers the weight of the water into the canyon walls. Fresh concrete takes time to cool and harden, so Reclamation's engineers came up with a novel solution. The dam was built in blocks and big pipes, and ice cold water was pumped through for rapid cooling. The diversion tunnels were closed off in 1935. Lake Mead began to cool. <coughs>
structure, the wires carry the electricity up and over the canyon walls at 230,000 volts. The towers that support and direct the wires are leaning into the canyon. These are cantilever towers designed to ensure that the wires do not touch the walls of the canyon and short out. I've never really done that. Now look down river, midway on the canyon wall, and you will say Aquí les menciono una línea de tiempo de la represa Hoover. En 1869, John Wesley Power hace la primera visita registrada a través del Gran Cañón. En 1902, el presidente Roosevelt firma la Ley de Recuperación. Los ingenieros de la Ley de Recuperación comienzan una larga serie de investigaciones sobre el control y el uso del río Colorado. Entre los años de 1905 y 1907, el río Colorado irrumpe en el Valle Imperial y crea el Mar Salto. En 1916, inundaciones sin precedentes en el río Gila en el río Colorado inundan el Valle de Yuma. En 1928, la ley del proyecto Boulder Canyon, presentada por el senador de California Hiram Johnson y el representante Philip Swing, es aprobada por el Senado de Estados Unidos el 14 de diciembre la Cámara el 18 de diciembre y es firmada por el presidente Kuldish el 21 de diciembre. La ley fue declarada efectiva en junio de 1929. En el año 1930 se completan los contratos de venta de energía eléctrica para cubrir el financiamiento de la represa y centrales eléctricas. En 1931 la Oficina de Recuperación abre ofertas para la construcción de la represa y la planta de energía. En 1932, las aguas del río Colorado se desvía alrededor de la represa Hoover el 14 de noviembre y en 1933 se coloca la primera pieza de concreto. En 1935, la represa comienza a llenar de agua el lago Mead y la última pieza de concreto se coloca en la represa en mayo. El presidente Roosevelt inaugura la represa en septiembre del mismo año. In the background lie the Great Mojave Desert and Death Valley. And in the distance are the metropolitan centers of Southern California as well as the Pacific Ocean. A single sweep of the eye takes in the upper and lower Colorado River basins, which include portions of Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, Nevada, Arizona, and California. One twelfth of the continental United States is drained by this great river system. Colorado for centuries was one of the world's wildest rivers. Melting snow in the mountains each spring swelled the river's flow, transforming it into a raging torrent. Time and again, the low, flat valleys in Arizona and Southern California were flooded. Then, as the river receded, millions of tons of topsoil were deposited on the land, creating fertile deltas as rich as anywhere on Earth. Early settlers, recognizing the fertility of the soil, irrigated the valleys directly from the river. They tried to protect their land from floods by constructing levees, but levees were feeble safeguards, and during major floods, the valleys were at the mercy of the uncontrolled river. The worst flood disaster occurred in 1905, when the river broke through the headworks of the Alamo Canal and poured into the Imperial Valley in Southern California to form the Salton Sea. 16 months of tedious labor were required to restore the river to its former channel. But the threat of flood was not the only problem posed by the unruly river. After the springtime floods and runoff, the river's flow generally dwindled, and at times its lower tributaries dried up completely. Then crops withered and died, and all living things were faced with water shortage. After years of unsuccessfully trying to cope with the unpredictable river, it became apparent that the only solution to the problem was to construct a dam to eliminate the cycles of flood and drought in the lower basin. 
The two main objectives were, first, to control floods to protect areas along the river, and second, to store water to irrigate the fertile desert soils during periods of drought. To meet these objectives, reclamation engineers proposed the Boulder Canyon project, which included Hoover Dam and a large conveyance canal entirely within the boundaries of the United States, that is, an all-American canal, to deliver irrigation water to the Imperial Valley. By controlling floods and storing water, the dam would regulate the river's flow year-round, furnishing silt-free water to farms, homes, and factories. A hydroelectric plant at the dam to generate power for the Southwest was included in the plan. With the scope of the problem defined, reclamation engineers spent years studying and planning the project. Congress in 1928 approved the Boulder Canyon Project Act, which included Hoover Dam, the infrastructure needed to build the dam, and the All-American Canal. Construction of Hoover Dam began in 1931. The structure was dedicated in 1935. Revenues from the sale of power have paid back to the Federal Treasury with interest the entire cost of the project. The reservoir created by Hoover Dam is named Lake Mead. Measured by volume, it is the largest man-made reservoir in the United States and can hold and store two years normal flow of the Colorado River. Managed by the National Park Service, Lake Mead National Recreation Area has become one of the nation's most popular playgrounds. More than 9 million persons visit the area each year to swim, fish, go boating, camp, and enjoy other outdoor sports. Regulation of Lake Mead is based on anticipated runoff from the mountain regions and on water requirements downstream. Normally, only enough water to meet downstream demand is released through the power plant turbines. The Boulder Canyon project has led to the full utilization of water available to the lower Colorado River Basin. Many features of the Bureau of Reclamation's Colorado River Storage Project are operated to assist upper basin states in using their shares of Colorado River water. The huge upper basin dams hold back high runoff to even out the river flows and thereby permit increased beneficial use of water in the upper basin states. These dams include Glen Canyon Dam in Arizona on the Colorado River, 370 miles above Hoover Dam. Flaming Gorge Dam on the Green River in Utah, near the Wyoming border. Navajo Dam on the San Juan River in New Mexico. And Blue Mesa, Morro Point, and Crystal Dams on the Gunnison River in Colorado. Authorized participating projects provide water for nearly 3 million acres of land in Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming. They also add almost 1.4 million kilowatts to the upper basin's 1.8 million kilowatts of hydroelectric power capacity. Hoover Dam's control of the Colorado River also made the construction of other dams downstream possible. 67 miles below Hoover Dam is Davis Dam, an earth and rock build structure. Construction of this reclamation project was required by a treaty with Mexico to regulate the delivery of water to that country. The Davis Power Plant generates 1.2 billion kilowatt hours of energy annually for Arizona, Nevada, and Southern California. Lake Mojave above Davis Dam is part of the Lake Mead National Recreation Area. Like Lake Mead, it offers opportunities for boating, fishing, and other water sports. Parker Dam, 88 miles below Davis Dam, was constructed by the Bureau of Reclamation with funds advanced by the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California. Lake Havasu, behind Parker Dam, provides a four-bay and desilting basin for the district's Colorado River Aqueduct, which delivers Colorado River water to the Los Angeles and San Diego metropolitan areas. Parker Dam also generates nearly 500 million kilowatt hours of electricity annually, much of which is used for pumping water along the aqueduct through the mountains to the coast. Water for the Central Arizona Project is also pumped out of Lake Havasu. This water flows southeastward via aqueduct to cities, farms, and industries in the Phoenix and Tucson area. Fifteen miles below Parker Dam is Headgate Rock Dam. Built by the Bureau of Indian Affairs, 
Ted Gay Rock Dam diverts water to lands of the Colorado River Indian Reservation near the town of Parker, Arizona. Palo Verde Diversion Dam, 43 miles below Headgate Rock Dam, diverts water to lands of the Palo Verde Valley, the oldest irrigation development on the Colorado River. The valley was settled in the late 1800s by Thomas H. Blythe, for whom the city of Blythe, California, was named. 88 miles below the Palo Verde Diversion Dam is Senator Wash Dam and Regulating Reservoir, an off-stream pump storage development on the California side of the Colorado River. It is designed to save water and improve deliveries to water users in the United States and Mexico. Two miles downstream from Senator Wash Dam are Imperial Dam and the All-American Canal Desilting Works. These installations accomplished the diversion of the Colorado River that the early settlers had struggled so valiantly but unsuccessfully to do. On the east side of Imperial Dam, water is diverted through the Gila Canal to the Gila Project in Arizona. On the west side, water is diverted through the All-American Canal to the Imperial and Coachella Valleys in California. Part of the All-American Canal Diversion is for the Yuma Project in Arizona and California. The desilting works remove river silt that would otherwise fill up and clog the canals and irrigation ditches. Eight hydroelectric plants along the All-American Canal generate electric energy for use in the irrigated areas. In this simulated night scene, you see some of the areas supplied with power from Hoover Dam. More than one half of the electric energy generated at the Hoover Power Plant is marketed in Los Angeles and Southern California coastal areas. And so today, Hoover Dam stands like a mighty sentinel in Black Canyon, keeping guard over downstream regions. Lying calmly above the dam are the waters of Lake Mead, waters that once carried the threat of devastation, but which are now harnessed to serve mankind. Crossing mountains and deserts are columns of transmission line towers carrying 4 billion kilowatt hours of electric energy annually throughout the southwest. Downstream, far from the dam, the river flows gently, offering its waters to 1.8 million acres of land and more than 25 million persons for domestic and industrial uses. Sparkling reservoirs and controlled river flows provide hundreds of acres of fish and wildlife habitat and recreational venues. These enduring benefits are the true significance of the Boulder Canyon Project, which has transformed the Colorado River into a mighty resource, thereby enhancing the lives of all inhabitants of the Great Southwest. En 1936 entra en pleno funcionamiento el primer generador comercial de la represa Hoover. En 1939 el almacenamiento en el lago Mead se extiende 110 millas y los almacenamientos de agua alcanzan los 8 billones de galones y en este momento la represa Hoover es la instalación hidroeléctrica más grande del mundo. En 1941 la elevación del lago Mid alcanza los 372 metros sobre el nivel del mar. En 1983 el agua en la represa se desborda por las dos columnas de aliviaderos hacia el río debajo de la represa y nuestro guía nos mencionó que este fue el último año que el agua alcanzaba el tope máximo de la represa y aquí en el video vemos la diferencia de colores en las rocas. En 1985, la represa Hoover celebra su quincuagésimo aniversario. En el año 1995, se abre el centro de visitantes y el estacionamiento de la represa Hoover. En el 2010, la represa Hoover celebra su septuagésimo quinto aniversario. Y en octubre de ese mismo año, inauguran el nuevo puente conmemorativo.
seepage. We have uh, seepage galleries throughout the complex. We have to get rid of hundreds of thousands of gallons of rainwater trapped between the kingdom walls and concrete block there. So uh, this may be in the desert, but we still got a water issue sometimes to get rid of. So welcome to Nevada side of the power plant. As you look across, we have each of these standing at 70 feet high, 30 feet visible to us, 40 feet more on the down floor. Each of these that are lit up means they're on and running. Two in the back there right now, uh, five and six likely, and these are spinning away at 180 revolutions per minute, producing 130 gigawatts of power. That's enough for 65,000 long for our minimum. If we chose to turn off 17 on at once, we could do hypothetically 2,080 megawatts of power over 8 million volts. Now, how this whole system works is very quickly. If you saw the uh, towers behind Lake Key, four of those, we call these intake towers. These are sitting on canyon ledges carved out by dynamite when they blow them down. So that water from Lake Key is falling through slots like waterfall down to 30 foot diameter install plants. Four of these hold up to the bottom. We're going to come in an angle on the Arizona and Nevada sides here, going directly to our generators. Now, from this point on, we're going to branch off to smaller 13 foot diameter install plants, each of these going to the generator each year. That water is going to go all the way down to the bottom, going against a turbine water beetle at 25 miles per hour, spinning at it. Thank you. 
takes a hoover dam so he gets a leg key in the back, swimming up like a fish, 350 feet to break the surface of the lake bean. It's an incredible dimension all around. Then we folks have been having a hoover tour at this point in this section here. We all have a great look at New Holland. We'll have you come in to where we just came uh, from here. I'll lead us back to the tower, 705, off to the dam here, and uh, all the displays. Muchas gracias por ver nuestro video y por favor apóyanos y suscríbete a nuestro canal y activa la campana de notificación y así sabrás cuando tengamos nuevos videos. Muchas gracias.